Hey there, it's Sam here from BMT School of Music and what I'm going to show you today is a quite advanced finger picking technique um, that actually I've been studying myself. It's by a guitarist called Lindsay Buckingham of Fleetwood Mac. The Rumours album is an album that I even have on uh, vinyl that was my dad's that he kindly let me have, his whole record collection. How cool is that? And it's one of my best um, albums of all time actually and there's something I have where every time I have a barbecue I've always got to play the Rumours album. It is brilliant. The guitar work is incredible, quite quite underrated. I think I thought um, even until I actually started studying this recently that this was possibly um, two guitars on the record and if not two guitars and then phenomenal finger picking which is what it actually turns out to be. So I'm going to show you a little bit of it so you can go and listen to the song called Never Going Back Again and it's played on nylon string. All I'm going to show you is is this one little part of the finger picking. It's a really really weird kind of polyrhythm thing. Um, what you're going to need is a guitar, preferably acoustic, tuned to drop D tuning so get yourself tuned up properly and then drop your bottom E down to a D, so that then when you play a D chord, you hear that, you hear a big, deep sounding D chord. And you can have a capo on fret four. Apologies, I've had this capo, this amazing uh, G7 capo, for about 14 years now, I think, nearly 14 years. And uh, it might be finally giving up the ghost. It does rattle a bit, I can't work out why. I'm pressing it on as hard as I can, and it seems to be rattling. So just bear with me, there's certain notes where you can hear it, certain notes where you don't. Uh, anyway, we're going to play just two chords here. One of them is a weird kind of D chord. So we're going to have this is going to have open E, which is actually a D, open A. You're going to have four on the D string, two on the G, three on the B, and then you're going to you can hear that buzz there. And you're going to have pinky finger fret five on the top E. So you're going to have that really really lovely inversion of D is used in the song. Then we're going to have a really weird, uh, I think this is an A7 chord. Is that A7? A7. A7, maybe A6, that would be called. But for this chord, you're going to have an open A. You're going to have fret Five on the D, this is where your um, your frets can get a little bit muddled. One, two, three, four, five with the capo, which is a dot, what is normally fret nine. You can do that with finger three. Then you're going to bar your first finger across fret two on the next three strings. Pinky finger is going to go on fret five of the B. So then your sort of numbering of this chord is going to be dead. Zero, five, two, five. Two. So your first finger is making two notes there. Really lovely A, A7, A6 chord. A13. Somebody's going to figure it out who's watching this. Anyway. I'm going to have those two chords. So, um, going on the assumption that you know some basics of finger picking, you're going to be using four digits in your right hand, so P, I, M, A, Pima. And you're going to have a bass part and a treble part. The bass part is going to be played just with your thumb. The treble part is going to be played with these three fingers, the IMA, I-M-A, and we're going to play them separately first. So holding this chord, which is really going to ache your hand. Um, if it really aches too much, just hold a normal D chord. The pattern will be exactly the same. So we've got our weird D chord. And your bass part is going to go E, D, A, D, like that. Circular motion in the thumb, whatever speed works for you. That's your bass part, just four notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now that goes um, basically in crotches. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now your treble part, it's really simple by itself. Three notes, you're going to go from the top E with your ring finger, your A. Then you're going to go B string with your middle finger, your M. Then you're going to go G string with your first finger or your I. Just backwards, like that, in threes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Got to be good at this before you can do the next bit. 
whatever speed is most comfortable for you, as long as it's consistent. You don't want any... Anything like that, just a little buzzing on my capo. Nothing... Nothing can be done about that, I don't think. No post-production is going to get rid of that buzz. So anyway, that's that. Now that's done in semi-quavers. If we count semi-quavers, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, one e and a, two, it's going to be really, really skew if to this three note melody. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. And that's going to be played at the same time as having those crotchets in the bass. And this pattern goes like this. Slightly different bass pattern. Other chord. I'm avoiding changing because I can't quite get it. I might be able to get it. Sort of in time. rhythm thing going on there. So how we put these together. So we're going to go on the assumption that now you've got your bass down and you've got your treble down. You're going to try doing both together. So you can think of this in threes or you can think of it in twos. I think it's best to think of it in threes. And so if I go for the first set of three, I have to play a bass note every two notes. Remember you've got crotchets in your bass. Oh sorry I said semiquavers didn't I? Uh oh done a little theory uh, whoopsie here. So if we carry on talking of those as semi-quavers, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, and our bass is actually going to be quavers one and two and three and four and, or a more simple way of putting it is we're going to have two treble notes for every bass note. So if I start with the bass and the treble, I'm going to have this, like that. See, there was two notes in the treble, one in the bass. Now, I have to go to my next bass note, two in the treble, one in the bass, which is that. This is me going in twos. That was the D with the G and the top E. Now my next one is going to be with the A, like that. Then the pattern is going to change every time I do that set of two. sets of three would be that, okay? Next set of three, notice the bass note is on the other second note. So the first one, second one, that's two of them. start to be able to work in that. I'm going to include a link to the tab as well and when you look at this this is the intro of the song but the only bits where this part is here is actually just here uh, the whole of that bar in fact there and also here we have the A7 chord which was the other chord but you can do this with any chord. And that's something I've been thinking about as I've been learning the whole song and then thinking, okay, that's a really cool new finger picking pattern. Where else can I use it? And normally I'm, my finger picking is more like but now I can add this. Different 
different thing. Quite a quite a cool rhythm. So anyway, I hope you I hope you find that fun. This is something where you might not master it as such, but it's really, really fun to have a go at and see if you can gradually work up to building up that pattern. <laughs> Take care. Goodbye.